Hello everyone, and welcome to Ghost Hunting with BBA99 and Camera Woman RA Random Wolf. Hi. Today, we are investigating the outside. We have gotten different apps on our phone that have been proven by real ghost investigators to work. This hurts. So, tonight, we are going to be investigating this field for ghosts. And explain what this does. Okay, so basically this is a spirit box, but for the phone. And this actually works. It basically plays white noise or like sandpaper scraping together. And then spirits are supposed to electromagnetically communicate through the white noise in the form of a voice. So, uh... Oh, crap. Why? No. Oh, God. No. Oh, okay. Low battery, question mark? We just started. That's not okay. <laughs> okay, let's uh, start with the spirit box then. Okay, so we're gonna use the uh, spirit box. I don't know if we're gonna get ghosts in this field, especially since I think this app is a ruse, but let's do this. So let's see what it says. Are you here with us tonight? Yep. yep. What is your name? Will you crunch a leaf if you're here with us? Take. What is your name? I heard Mark. Mark. I heard Mar, but I think it was a... Is I, your name Mar or I, Mark? I heard two syllables. Do you want us to leave you alone for the night? Fine. That was a different voice, though. Help you? Okay, so this is an EMF detector, electromagnetic field detector. And basically the theory is, is that ghosts can manipulate electromagnetic fields around them. So any power source or energy source. We're going to be testing this with our flashlight later, but uh, EMF detectors can actually sense when a ghost is near you. So, uh, let's see if this works. Um, so, real quick, I didn't want to inter interrupt BB99's, uh, spiel about the EMF reader. But I looked over my shoulder twice, because I swear I heard leaves crinkling behind me. It like, wasn't on camera. No, it wasn't on camera, but legit, no joke, it actually freaked me out. He saw me turn my head. And the flashlight's flickering again. Oh, joy. If there is a spirit here with us, would you make this meter go to red? All you have to do is simply touch it. I'm gonna back up just in case the camera messes oh, with it. Oh, just in case I die? No, just in case the camera messes with it. Just in case I die? Oh my god. Well, it's at a yellow, which isn't supposed to happen. If you are here with us, can you please put this on the red button setting? Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, you heard that too, right? I wasn't yeah. I wasn't gonna say anything because it's like we're in the middle of a neighborhood, know, but, but it's, it's like that was it's loud. Crunchy. That was loud. <laughs> okay. So there's more crunches over in that direction. Do you okay. want to go over there? No, thanks. I'm just going to lean right here against the tree. I'm going to go street. over there. Oh, my God. Over there. This is a very sketchy area. I'm getting high EMF levels because of this power box. So that isn't very ghosty. Oh, I'm going to die. I just saw something move out of the corner of my eye. I'm going to ham it up to anxiety. Well, that's as far as we go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Everybody. So this is another trick that I'm not sure works. The other stuff might have just been fake app, just ham it up to that, but this one is hands-off real stuff. Now basically what ghost investigators do is they unscrew a flashlight head so that it's just barely touching the battery to stay on. And evidently ghosts can conjure up enough energy to uh, move the lid to turn it on or off. And you can say, like, turning it on means yes, and turning it off means no. So we're going to try that. Um, so let's just unscrew our flashlight so that it's just about to turn off. Right there. So on light means yes, off light means no. Can we ask you a few questions tonight? 
Not only me, it didn't turn off, so that's a, that's a mm. good sign. Now we have flashlight pointing to the stars. Hey, hey, aliens, come invade. Okay. We're inside now, because it's cold outside. My toe froze, so we went inside. We have our EMF reader out again. Just in um, case something decides to come and poke between us. Yeah. But while we are waiting for something to poke us, we are going to tell our personal experiences in this house about uh, paranormal activity. Um, so I guess I'll just start off the first story then. You look like a floating head. Point, ooh, 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 point the, point, there I'm we go. The, I'm the Wario apparition. So right now we're at EMF level, like, what is it, three? I think it's just like permanently like that, yeah. yeah so just, if it goes up, like if it goes up any, then there's something. Um, if it goes to orange or pink, then we know something's messing with it. Um, but right now it's just on a couple of good settings, so. Cool. So, uh, one night I woke up, and this is a true story. I wasn't, like, hallucinating, I think. And, uh, basically I got out of bed to let our dog out. And, uh, I bring him downstairs, you know, I let him do his doggo stuff. And then I start walking back up the stairs. Now, we own a few cats, too, and they uh, primarily sleep on the couch. And they're usually fast asleep some nights. But tonight of all nights, I felt a sixth sense, if you know what I mean, behind me. And I was like, oh. So I turned around, and I didn't see anything. But all the cats on the couch had woken up and were looking right behind me. And my dog, who's pretty chill most of the time, especially at night, looked behind me and ran up the stairs. That was an indicator that I should get a move on. So I walked up the stairs and I just felt this creepy feeling the whole way up and I finally made it back to my bed. And when I looked back out into the hallway, I saw this weird multi-appendaged thing just go into the other room. Oh, uh, well, this room, actually. It's this, this room. room. This room, yes, it likes this room. Um, and its movements were fast, but very jittery, and a pretty frightening experience for me. Um, I have no idea what it was. It was a ghost manifesting into some form, and I was just unlucky enough to see it. This isn't a story I made up. This actually happened to me. It's pretty creepy. Now, Random Wolf, do you have any spooky stories? Alright, hey guys, Random Wolf here. Um, so one of my earliest, um, experiences, and this is gonna sound, uh, I don't think I've mentioned this one much, but one of my earliest experiences was actually, uh, in a public building. And it was, uh, I was going to school there, it was my school at the time, and a lot of the kids had said, you know, like, oh yeah, the, the building is totally haunted, you know, um, uh, they they built it on top of this old farm that you know had been paved on top of this miniature cemetery here so there's like spooks and ghosts every kid wants to uh, our phone just went out uh my phone just turned off okay, okay well the emf detector is back on back on is it supposed to do that uh no the sunlight mode was on which means my phone's not supposed to turn off so something just turned my phone off anyway continue <laughs> great so you know like every kid wants to believe that their school is haunted like ooh, you know um but no joke there was actually something going on um it, there would be a lot of just, it would sound like high heels, high heels walking. If you were alone and you went into like the, the locker room or one of the bathrooms, you could just hear high heels walking and pacing back and forth. And, uh, um, and so I used to test this a lot where I would uh, lean against the wall or I'd sit in one of the benches and, you know, I'd say if there's somebody here with me, tap your foot tap your foot and there would be a loud click so then I go are you a boy or are you a girl and I'd clap twice for, or once and it would be double click and every now and then I wouldn't get a response sometimes um, it would be like always like double click yes no um, but one time I was there and I don't think I was even doing anything in particular. I was um, at my locker or whatever, or one of the sinks. And 
I heard the heels and they went click, click, click. And I was like, oh, there's the footsteps. And then all of a sudden, the stall that was next to me suddenly it's shaking. And I was the only one in there. The wall was conjoined on the other side. So it's like it couldn't have been like a, like a, a vibration thing from a wall next door. Because that's not where the wall sat for this stall. It freaked me out and I left. I left pretty quick. Um, so that was my first experience. Is we had a lot of footsteps. And something hit the stall so hard that it caused the whole frame to shake in a public building. So yeah. Back to you, BBA 99. Off camera, the EMF went up a little bit. It went up. And of course, I wasn't filming to get it. Yeah, of course, you know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, set it, set it back more in the middle. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe something else will. Let's get some candles, yeah. put it around. I kind of think in that, maybe. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. Alright. We have a candle set up. Wait, this will become important in a few moments. Alright, so now that we have our. Uh, Ouija board, a uh, candle. Um, let's tell one of our last scary stories before we move on. It happened to both of us. Um, yes, at the same time. We have we share a room, we have a bunk bed, and basically there was this like toy in there that we hadn't gotten rid of. And basically this toy made sound if you press a button in it. So you had to press the button to make it go. Nothing else could set it off. So basically one night it was on a shelf, and it's been on the shelf for a while, so nothing was pressuring on it, it's just, it's been there for a while. Nothing else could have set this off, but we're about to sleep. Um, well, and it goes off. So, you know, we don't think much of it, you know, it's just a little singing toy, you know, maybe, maybe just, it glitched out. So, but then it goes off again. And again. And again. So I end up getting up, and I go over to it, and I move it. It kept, like, restarting as if something was continuously hitting the button. Even restarting through halfway of the halfway. song. Halfway. Like, as so, if something stopped it and then did it again. Yeah, so it's like if something was leaning on it, something would have to be applying pressure to hit the button. A couple minutes later... It goes off again. Uh, I asked it to stop. I was like, please stop. This is annoying. And I leaned over and I said, yeah, knock it off. And it stopped for the rest of the night. There was not a sing, nothing else. Mm hmm So, and, I mean, that kind of goes to show you that it was something paranormal, too, because it's like, not only I moved it, and it wasn't until we had said something verbally that it stopped. Which is definitely very spooky. Very, very spooky. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's kind of like our, our finale here. We're going to try one more thing. So, um, following up from the story about the toy that kept going off that we just told you about, uh, it went in tangent with a ghost that our mom saw. Uh, we were just getting our kitchen remodeled. It was our first time that we had done any major revision to this house. This house is uh, over 30 years old. And... We were all home, we were all upstairs, and our mom was in our kitchen, it was unfinished at the time, and she looked in one of the new appliances, and because it was reflective, and she saw who she thought was Cade walk into the room. Midnight snack. <laughs> and mom asked him something, because, you know, she was just like, well, hey, did you get blah blah done? And there was no answer, so she turned around, and there was no one there. So she thought maybe Kate had walked back out, you know, and she just didn't realize. Well, she went to the stairs and she called up and Kate came down and he was in a completely different outfit than what this boy was wearing. So that was uh, our, our little kitchen ghost. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, for our final, final ploy, we are going to turn the spirit box back on and we are going to ask a few questions and watch this, the spooky candle because why not? And we're going to see if maybe we can contact the boy from the kitchen. Or the spider creature demon. Oh, sure. Thanks. <laughs> Alright. Is the boy from the kitchen with us? Are you here with us? Is there anything someone would like to say? House. 
Would was, you like to tell us something? Was this once your house? Yep. Did you die here? I hear a lot of vowels, but not clear words. What is your name? Have to. You have to what? Are you the creature I saw that night? Are you the little boy from the kitchen? Are you the one who played with the toy in our room? How can I play? Kid. Well, you can you can play with anything you want. If you're here with us, can you do something drastic to one of those candles? Can you give us a sign you're listening? We're here. What do you want to say? Is there anything you'd like to say to those at home watching? Pretty good. Yeah. It is pretty, it good. Is pretty yep. good. Yep, I heard yep. 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 <laughs> are you a kid or are you an adult? Kid. Kid. That was very distinctly kid. Yeah. Mark. Mark? Mark again. Are you the one from outside? Hey. Well, there you go. Thank you very much for yeah. communicating with us tonight. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to say? I think that's an end session. Yeah. They left. Ooh, so kid. tonight we communicated with Mark. Um, a Mar, a Mar something. Yeah, like a Mark or a Mar. Mar. We encountered Mar or Mark in the field outside. Outside. And we just encountered Mark again inside. And, I mean, we both distinctly heard kid. Mm-hmm. When we asked the are you an adult or a kid question. Um, so I'd say we should call it a night. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. The end. The end. Later. The only one you will encounter tonight is me.